Greetings, it's Brother Ravana Noon back once again. Uh, I took a month off. I had uh, business things to take care of. Uh, recently got back from Puerto Rico, taking care of a property there. Um, and while I was there, I had time to do a lot of introspection, meditation, ritual work within uh, the area I was in. I connected with, you know, <clears throat> my ancestral spirits, things of that nature. Today, we will be discussing how to ritualize your life on a left-hand path. It's very important to understand that the left-hand path is not a system insofar as a ritualistic system. It is more of a philosophy that within that philosophy, there are many different ritualistic systems that one can use. The, the main aspect of the left-hand path is always to become a master over self. Now, we hear people say this all the time. It's become a catchphrase. But is there truly an understanding of what it means to become a master over self? There's going to be many different interpretations. But in reality, what does it really mean on this work? To be... An individual on the left-hand path is to be an individual who is consistently pushing the borders and boundaries of the self. What does that mean? The self. The self is beyond Superficial identifications and definitions. The self is just not you, your name, your date of birth, where you were born. The self goes deeper than that. It deals with the deepest part of yourself. It deals with the uh, part of yourself that is readily not known. Or as Carl Jung would say, the shadow self. The dark side. It deals with that part of yourself that is constantly suppressed, hidden, or not dealt with. So the right-hand path is traditionally the religious path. Or it is the path that deals with external identification where it is a god, gods, goddesses, things of that nature. The right-hand path involves the intentional effort to dissolve or merge the self into the objective universe. That sounds beautiful. Merge into all, lose yourself, become one with everything. Sounds beautiful. The problem with that is... This all and self that you're trying to merge sounds like a political system, a dictatorship, a guru, a organization or a group that wants to enslave your mind. You understand if I give you the philosophy that we should all be one, we should all just love each other and join each other. Meanwhile, I'm smacking you up, brutalizing you through police brutality, making you feel inferior because of your ethnicity, your race, your nationality, making you feel that you don't have a voice. But yeah, we're supposed to love and become one with God in all things. It's easily a way to control the individual. So the right-hand path teaches that these two categories are an illusion. Then in reality, the two are identical. The right-hand path teaches that the solution is to subordinate the illusion of self-awareness, 
of the psyche to the reality of God, nature, etc. Meaning, you just get rid of who you are, your identity and everything else, and just merge into the reality of God. God who is not proven, God who cannot be shown, God who cannot be um, realized. It's just some far-off entity or far-off energy of fog, nothingness, whatever. Right-hand path teaches that these two categories are illusion, that reality, the two are identical. Like I said, again, that you merge the self-awareness of the psyche to the reality of God or nature. Whereas the left-hand path involves the conscious attempt to preserve and strengthen one's isolate, psychocentric existence against the objective universe while creating, apprehending, comprehending, and influencing a varying number of subjective universes. It is your attempt <clears throat> to maintain the isolated individual consciousness and using that power to influence your subjective universe to create a new universe that eventually should reflect into the objective universe the left hand path is based on individuating oneself against the universe we believe in the strength of our own isolate will to create change in the objective universe We believe in ourselves as the one God that is able to utilize their faculties of reasoning, logic, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, energy, power, and strength to influence and create change in your objective universe in other words you're creating your own reality you're not looking to god you're not looking to goddesses gods angels orisha netaru to do a damn thing for you because you realize that you as the one god are the ones who created the orisha the Neturu, the angel, the Malaikat, God, Allah, Yahweh. You created all that. So through the collective unconscious of the human experience, we created those so-called entities. But when you realize that you're the God, you realize that you could use any one of those archetypes that you resonate with to go into your subjective universe, your subconscious mind to reprogram and decondition the crap that has been put there by society, religion, individuals who are so-called in control of society and you clean that crap out so that you can program what you want to put in there and start to create your objective universe. Your subjective universe is created by you. Your subconscious does assist in creating your reality. But if you have no idea what's in your subconscious mind, if you have no idea the programming, the conditioning that is there, the trauma, the pain, the wounds that is there, you're just walking around aimlessly and think you're so aware, but reality says you're not aware. You're only aware of your conscious or self-awareness of your outer or objective surroundings or universe. You have no idea what's inside of you. The funniest thing I hear consistently when I talk to people, they have no issues or problems. <laughs> To be living, to be existing means you're going to have issues and problems. Because if you didn't have any of these, why the hell are you still here? You were, there would be no need for you to still be living this human experience. You'd be gone. You're here because you're still trying to master an aspect or a part of yourself. I 
On the left-hand path, we look at ourselves as separate and independent entities apart from the objective universe. The left-hand path teaches that the two are capable of being perceived as distinct and are in fact distinct as a result of the existence of the principle of isolate consciousness. By cultivating and nourishing this intelligence as a separate and unique quality, we develop our own individually determined freedom or liberation. Qualities of individuals on the left-hand path. The value of the advancement and preservation of the self while seeking to become a divinity or behold oneself as such already. The conviction that individuals can become already akin to God. There is no such thing as a selfless act. The individual is preeminent. That all decisions should be made with the goal of cultivating the self. Each individual is responsible for his or her own happiness and that no external force will provide this. The forces of the objective universe can be harnessed to one's personal will. Power gained and willed, wielded in such a manner as an aid to enlightenment, to self-satisfaction, and self-deification. This is the aspects of the left-hand path. This is the aspects of understanding the true self. When we wake up and realize in this left-hand path that your conscious effort should be about realizing one's higher self or true self and to bring this self into one's mundane self, worldly, common, everyday existence self, as often as possible, thus coming to know one's true self while incarnate. This is very important to understand because when we are walking around seeking to love God, love everyone, love everything, we're living in a delusional mind state. The true love is the self-love. The first love is the self-love. If you have no idea who you are, don't care enough to find out your issues and problems and overcome them and master them, then you're just walking around like an animal instinctually surviving from day to day. You should be pushing yourself every day to be greater. You should challenge yourself every day to be greater. How do you do that? Well, as I said earlier, the topic of today's video is Ritualizing your life, your everyday life, on the left-hand path. What I, what I mean by that is, you don't walk around and just say, I'm going to do my rituals tonight. Everything is based upon a ritual and an altar room. And that's the only work you ever do. That's good, and it assists in your growth, and it does help. But that is not the goal. The goal is every part of your life should be ritualized. Every part of your life should be brought into reality. Into the reality that you are creating through your works. So sure, I could do a ritual with Kali, the destructive force to destroy those uh, weaknesses within me. To destroy those issues and traumas and pains so I can learn to confront them and master them. Sure. But what do I do when I'm out in everyday existence, out in the street, let's say? I'm going to the supermarket. And somebody cuts you off in the line and you were next. Now, you have many ways to react, and it depends on you and the work you've done to find out where you're at. For example, if you're a passive-aggressive person, more passive, and that person cuts you off, you'll just say, oh, I'm not in a rush. They can have it. I'm not going to make a stink about it. Sounds nice. Sounds really wonderful. But see, that's that self 
to where this true self comes out where you have to realize I'm a passive person and people have been taking advantage of me all my life. And this one situation is a perfect situation to ritualize the work I've done on my subconscious and my subjective universe to become more aggressive, to become stronger, and stop being so passive and letting people try to influence and run my life for me. So what do you do at that moment? You say, excuse me. I was next in line. And I do not feel that it is correct that you cut me off in line. One, you didn't even ask for permission or state the reason why you felt you need to come off. And two, you need to get to the back of the line. It's not a matter of aggression in the sense that you're trying to start a fight. It's the matter that your true self is starting to assert that power, that warrior power to say no longer will I be disrespected and allow my passive energy to just have people run over me and take advantage of me. That is called ritualizing your everyday life. Not just sitting in a room saying, Om Cream Kali. Om Cream Kali. It's not about that. That's one aspect that helps you tap into the subconscious mind to bring up the issues, the traumas, the pains, and the wounds that can come through the, the ritual. It happens after the ritual in a dream state. It happens in messages throughout the day, symbols throughout the day. That's positive and beautiful, strong work. But that's not the only work. Because if I can't take that and apply it to my everyday life and be ritualistic in the moment as, as things are happening, then I'm only doing part of the work. That's how you ritualize your everyday life. You find in the moment the circumstances that you've been most working on present themselves in your everyday life as if almost your true self is testing you to see if the work you've done is really for real or is it just for fake. Meaning, are you going through the motion just so you can say I belong to some magical uh, organization or I belong to some solitary witch mentality that I've created, but yet the same issues and trauma are still laying within. Sure. I can share with you a hundred different magic rituals for love, a hundred different magic rituals for money. We know those things. I mean, got that on pack. I mean, got it written. I mean, trust me, I got it written down. I got it in my mind. I can create things as I go. On how it works and it's been effective. But that's not the only work. Those are mundane things that help in your everyday existence. Create a better life for you to survive in. But. Is it transforming you? Is it changing you? Is it creating a new reality? Or is it just the same old you? Doing the same old things, existing day to day, and the inner work isn't really happening. If that's a question you have to ask yourself. Do you have rulership of your inner world? Meaning... Do you have a sense of reality and purpose in what you do? Do you realize that you create your objective universe? Or are you just day to day? This is why on our radio show, Awakening Universal Minds, which is on TalkShoe.com, we constantly go over the fact that a black adept on the left-hand path is consistently working rituals in their life 
when not in the altar or in their altar room or in front of their altar or whatever, they find the, the situations that can present themselves and that's when the rituals are also activated and you'll see where you've grown. Some of you may have issues of love. You consistently find yourself being hurt by individuals. And it is your lack of attention, lack of acceptance, and lack of love as a young child that leads you to do extreme or absurd things to get the, the attention or that acceptance or that love. And the reason why this keeps occurring is because there's no true love of yourself. So, you constantly find yourself in very dire straits situations and relationships. So the next time, let's say you do work on yourself. Do some work with Heteru, Love Goddess. You're not worshipping these archetypes. Let me keep repeating this. You don't worship them. You find the symbols that resonate with you about these archetypes that help activate your subconscious mind to deal with the issues that are within you that resonate with that archetype. <clears throat> so, there's some rituals of love or with love with Hateru, let's say, or Oshun, and you meet somebody new. But in your rituals, you found out that one of the reasons you love so fast, so quick, is because you didn't receive love from mommy or daddy the way you wanted when you were young. So these individuals in your relationships are a craving or a crying out for that love that you never really got. So the next individual you meet has all these qualities that start feeding those issues, those core issues that you are dealing with. So what happens, we tend to turn a blind eye to the negative qualities of this individual. All just because we want to be accepted and loved and cared for, we turn a blind eye. So this blind eye then becomes a thorn in our side. When you've done the ritual work to identify these things, you start to find out. I'm back at that moment where I'm craving the attention, the acceptance, and the love I missed as a child. And I'm starting to make exceptions to the rule for this individual because they're feeding me that one aspect. And you have to understand there's individuals out there that can zone in on those weak parts of, your, parts of yourself and use it to get what they want. So you have to be wise enough to identify when you're given into those core issues of yourself. And not make exceptions to the rule about certain characteristics individual uh, possesses that can be detrimental to you. That's called ritualistic living in your everyday life. Meaning, at that very moment, you start to identify that. You start to work the ritual at that moment. And, and you do a inner chant, let's say. And you say, I will not give in to my core issues of... The craving of love. I will open my mind, my eyes, my spiritual eye, and not just my heart to see the truth about this individual. They're feeding me what I want right now, but I know there's something not being revealed, and I will find it and address it before it's too late. And then you're knee deep back in another relationship that can be abusive, hurtful. You, this is called ritualizing your everyday life. You have to find ways and means to do this. 
Some of you all love shows like Love and Hip Hop. You're so super occultist, so super whatever, but you love dumbass shows like Love and Hip Hop, things like that. What that says is as much as you really think you know is as dumb as you really are as well. Because one thing you identify in the left-hand path is patterns of programming. You realize that the media is a big tool to program. That doesn't mean you just shut your eye open and don't watch nothing. But when you watch things, you watch things with a conscious mind, a more aware mind, deeper than just the superficial layer of what you see in, in as far as the occult symbolism or meanings in the movie. You go even deeper and you see those things that reflect in you within that movie. That, are, that movie is reflecting about you. You analyze. You constantly are analyzing a movie, a television show. Whatever the case may be, you constantly analyze. Because if you don't, what essentially is happening is the media then becomes the tool that is re I mean that is being used to reprogram you again. After all this work you did, you're right back where you were. So you did all this work for nada. For nothing. So you have to find means to ritualize every aspect of your life in everyday situations. It's not just about the old room. I'm going to keep repeating this. It's not just about doing it in the old room or a group ritual. It's the moments when you're not around people in a group ritual or you're not in the old room to, that you really find out how much, how much the ritual has really helped you. How much you've really grown. It is in those moments you start to find out. So for myself, for example. <clears throat> years ago, when I got into the occult, it was all about, you know, trying to... Part of it was trying to find myself. So you put on all the ritualistic clothes, the garbs, the... The pentagrams, the dark robes, and you identify with the outer appearance, and you think that makes you different. No, it does. It, it just makes you a, another follower until you realize that it's not about that. It's about the inner transformation. This is why I don't dress in certain ways to identify myself with being so a left-hand path or a cultist where people say, oh, he's in the occult. Woo! Nah. Matter of fact, if I'm coming to walking down the street, most of the time you won't even know what I'm into. I'm going to have my baseball caps on a lot of times. I'm going to have some fresh pair of sneakers, fly kicks. I'm going to have either jeans or a nice pair of pants. I can have a polo shirt. I can have some t-shirt. Regular shirts. I can be wearing a New York Yankee shirt, whatever. And you wouldn't know what I really am about and what I'm dealing with and what is up here. Because I don't need to do this identification, I'm different kind of thing. Get a thousand piercings, all this. That's all external, but what that really means is you're still stuck on the external. You still haven't taken across the boundary from external to internal to realize that a lot of that is attention seeking. A lot of that is, look at me, I'm different. I'm on some deep shit. You're really not. You're just still trying to seek acceptance or still trying to seek approval from people. When you really get to that level, you don't go to the extreme saying, whoa, look at me. You just work your life every day. And you work it from the part of the internal. You start to realize these things. You start to realize your genetic code and the gifts that come with it. You start to say, okay, well, I did the self-identification thing on a super superficial level. Like for me, Puerto Rican. That's just a nationality. That comes from a nation or a country. What ethnic group? Hispanic. What is Hispanic? Hispanic can be made up of 
African, uh, Indian or Native American, and Spaniard. And a lot of other groups migrated or immigrated to those countries. So there's Germans, there's Irish, there's, eight, there's Chinese, there's Arab. There's all kinds of people that fit within that description that came to these countries that are considered Latin American countries. What is my race? My race is African and Asian. Predominantly, meaning I have strong African ancestry through my DNA and Native American ancestry, which is related to Asian and African. So that's what most predominantly racially I would be. Okay, I got that. I did that self-identification super superficially. Now, who the hell am I? Well, Ravana Noon is somebody who is really crazy. Take that how you want it, but crazy insofar as I don't conform to society's standards, rules, regulations, borders, and boundaries. I break those borders, rules, boundaries, and limitations. I don't break the laws because that's going to get you hemmed up and you've got to really be smart, whatever path you walk in. But I do break the rules as, oh, we should do this, this is how we should do it, this is how it should be done. No. I'm not with that. I'm not with that. Okay, I love my culture, the Puerto Rican culture. I love all aspects of it, but I don't agree with all of it because some of it is just really ignorant and really stupid. So I just, I question everything and I live my life according to what fits with me, not because I'm Puerto Rican. This is how you're supposed to do things. Look at life like this, act like this. That is programming. That is control. And everyday situations... When I find myself going back on the programming of control, cut that off. I address right then and there, and I say, no, I'm not going back under that system of control. And it's not ever going to happen. So that's one way to work on this. You have to find your own personal way. I'm just sharing different uh, aspects and different Things that may happen. I don't know what's in your personal life. But all I can do is share. From my experience and things that I've done and worked on for years. This is one way you could do it. You got to find out your situations. And as they occur. How do you ritualize that moment? To really see if the work you've been doing. Is making a difference in your life. Because if it's not making a difference. What's the purpose of even doing it? You should be doing things to make a difference in your life. Without that difference, you're just like everybody else into whatever you want to be into. Just because it makes you sound deep, heavy, or it makes you sound like you are really into some real deep crap and look at me and... No. Nah. But it's about that transformation. It's about that change. It's about that growth. It's about challenging yourself. Can you challenge yourself? Are you the kind of person that can really challenge yourself? Or are you just a person that's going to do things because it makes you seem different or deep? This, this is a question you should ask yourself. And if you're not able to ask yourself these deep hitting questions, then there's no work or progression that's going to occur. Lastly, you have to be realistic on the left hand path too. Very realistic. You can't be delusional. Listen, the human being is consistently and constantly full of notions, usually, usually unexamined. They never really examine things about what he or she would like to do and should do. Sometimes these notions are in conflict. Often they are based on delusion. This area has to be cleared of unwanted programming and filled with wanted programming. This part of the self is mostly and most easily affected by two forces, self-knowledge and magic. Knowledge is an understanding of happiness and limits. Happiness 
is a self-determined and self-perceived state. Not only is it what makes me happy, not what makes you happy, it is very likely that you have seldom known magical happiness because you do not know your character. Magical happiness is not mere gratification. It is that which engages the greatest parts of your being. It is not the result of indulgence, which is the straight, straight uh, which is the state granted by those things with which we can temporarily gain union. Magical happiness is the state of knowing who you are by what has made you happy. Knowledge is based on a true understanding of limits of self. You won't be playing for the NBA if you are 5'2 and cannot shoot for crap. You won't be Miss America if you're missing your two front teeth. Knowing your limits, knowing exactly what you are, and then using your assets and overcoming your shortcomings is the key to happiness. Cut the delusions out, my people. We are delusional. Not everybody could be a rapper. Not everybody could be an athlete. Not everybody can be a movie star. You have to be realistic and find your zone that you can succeed in. This is ritualizing your everyday life. Be real with yourself. Don't freaking be delusional. Be real with yourself. Because without being real with yourself, you are going to be in a heap of delusional stupidity. Be real. If I'm on the left-hand path, as a Puerto Rican who's heavily influenced by African and Taino culture, then I have to be real with myself and say, yo, some of these Eurocentric practices ain't for me. I just ain't going to get with it. No matter how deep, dark, and woo it seems, I just ain't rolling. I can't do that. So you got to find what's real for you and say, I'm going to work with this and ritualize it from a left-hand path, path perspective of the individuated consciousness. That's being real. That's working that shit. You understand? That's how you work this. Deal with your delusions and be real and ritualize your everyday surroundings, everyday actions and circumstances and activities. Let's get real, people. It's not just about ritualistic work in an altar or a group setting. It's about ritualizing every aspect of your life, every moment of the day. With that, I like to say peace. Thank y'all for listening. Spread the word. And stay tuned. If you have any questions, hit me up at darkoccultist99 at outlook.com. Once again, that's darkoccultist99 at outlook.com. Peace.